Okay, so let's start. What I want to tell you is about um, how local area networks work. Okay. In the old times, prior to 1970, okay, the communication was essentially point to point. So, if you have a note here, you have a note here, you put uh, a link between them, and you send data back and forth. The protocol layer was something like this. At the very bottom, what do we have? At the very bottom of protocol layer, we have what? Link. Very bottom. Physical. Physical layer. And the physical layer essentially it talks about you know, how to sh shape uh, the bits and how do you send the bits. Okay. For example, if you put uh, point zero, 0.01 volt is a zero. If you put uh, point zero 0.02 volts, it's a one. Because it's zero ones and you send it. Of course, when you send bits here, what happens? There are some errors. So bits may get a complete error. So there was a data link control here that would take care of it. And on top of that, we had network layer uh, and etc. Et okay. Oh, so that was a point-to-point -point address. We, we, you know, and the DLC would take care of errors that happened would, you know, very much similar to RDT, that would send, retry it, and acknowledge it, etc., etc., would happen. And the protocol that worked at this level was uh, HDLC, High Level Data Link Control, or SDLC, Synchronous Data Link Control. SDLC was a proprietary protocol by IBM. HDLC was a standard. Then, uh, so that was the story of point to point. Then, in '69, a gentleman called uh, Norm Abramson He was from the University of Hawaii. He made a proposal to NSF, I think, or DARPA, uh, wanted to get some grant money. The problem that he was facing was the following. In Hawaii, there are five or seven islands, right? There's Oahu, Oahu, something like this, uh, that Honolulu is here, okay? And there's our island of Hawaii, uh, Milwaukee or some islands. And these islands have volcanoes. And he wanted to monitor these volcanoes uh, from the central uh, campus. And he would put some, uh, some uh, sensors for temperature or earth movement, seismic measurement. He would collect the information and he wanted to send it to here. He made a proposal how to send this information from here to here. And he wanted to get some grant money, research money, so it should be something novel. At that time, in the late 60s, late 60s, uh, you know, the, the state of technology was that there were radio links, different frequencies, and they, we could put cable in the ocean. But he wanted to have some novel technique to collect this data, to enable all these stations to send data to the source. How would you do that? Any idea? Different frequencies? Mm -hmm. Different that is, sure. That is, for example, if you go 64 her, megahertz, 65 megahertz, etc., etc. Essentially different channels. But that wasn't research. That technology was known. So give me a better idea. Sorry. <laughs> so no, wha okay, wha okay. Wha what do you mean? Like each of the other islands could transmit stuff. 
No, no. We, we, so, so each element, each of these network uh, nodes, what do they do? Like periodically transmit something out to the. How do they transmit? What do you mean by transmit? Uh, uh, Samsung, same, same, same channel. That's important. Same channel. So I have here, 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 here. So they would use the what? Same channel. Say 64 megahertz. And you said uh, periodically, yeah, every sensor would collect data every now and then. But periodically doesn't really mean. And there was no central control, that's, that's the point. These stations were independent. So they wanted to send data. So, Joe, how would they do? They would send. Send that, and then. So they, I would send the data here on the same frequency. So if it happens at that time, everything was okay, and no one was sending, so I would get this data. And then what? Use an acknowledgement. And you send acknowledgement. I use different frequency for acknowledgement. Different frequency to all of them. Of course, when I send acknowledgement, acknowledgement goes to everybody. But I didn't have data, I wouldn't care about it. What's the problem here? The problem is... The main station doesn't know. Uh, Say it again. The main station doesn't know which island is sending them. No, no, no. This is A, B, C, D. I would send acknowledgement to session A. Everybody could hear that, but they would ignore it. If I say acknowledgement A, session B would receive an acknowledgement, but this acknowledgement is for A. You would hear the signal, but they would ignore it. The problem is that, at the, if at the same, because there is no control here, every one of these stations would send the data whenever they had it. If at the same time that I ha had data here, and this guy would also send, they're using the same frequency, then what would happen? Collide. It would collide. When they collide, then what? There is a collision. collision uh, Oh. So this guy is what? Would hear some high frequency jam, some jam. Wouldn't hear anything. So, so you wouldn't send acknowledgement. So these guys would not receive acknowledgement. Then what do they do? They they make a random period of time for. Each Why don't they send back right away? Uh, how about uh, if they send right away, they collide again? They collide again. So, so they wait, setting them, them, and then they send back. It's very good. You should have written a proposal in 1969. You would get a lot of money. So, so in this guy, then he showed that. He showed that if you use this protocol, the maximum efficiency that you can get is 18%. Which means that if your channel capacity has say 100 kilobit per second, you could only get 18 kilobit per second out of this. Everything else was retransmission, collision, retransmission, resulting collision, things will go back. Okay. Then he came, uh, the, the idea, of why is it so? Is Assume that, assume that, and he did very simple but very beautiful analysis. He said, assume that everybody has packet size of, you know, fixed size. Okay, and that's time. So that's station A, station B, station C. Okay, so if I send a packet at this time, and if you send a packet at this time, what happens? There's collision, because you see that there is an overlap. So, assume that this guy is sending a packet. Start service, sending a packet from here. Okay. Who, can, who can interfere with this transmission? If I start, this guy starts from here and ends here, does it interfere with this guy? No. If this guy starts from
from here can you interfere of course because there, there's an overlap so this 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 period is bad okay how about if this guy starts from here can he can he uh, collide of course you can collide see it is so anybody if 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 i put if you put a nice uh, line so if i put a line here anybody that starts transmission in this interval they can interfere with me not only that anybody who can who starts transmission during this interval can zap me also because if you start from here your packet comes here we are assuming all packets are the same size so this he called it periods of vulnerability so the period of vulnerability is 2t okay we showed that the best that you can get is 80 percent the maximum 80 percent then he came and and he published it very nicely he published it and uh, then he immediately published another paper he said that let me have and he called this pr protocol aloha because of Hawaii no, no. then he said okay let me do the fall modification I will assume that my that my time is slotted okay and these are slot time is this, exactly the same size of, as my packets and the rule is that if I arrive if this station comes here and has a packet to be ready he doesn't send it right away he waits till the end of the slot and then sends it through okay if that is the case let's see what so this in the aloha case that's aloha my period of vulnerability is 2t two, two, two t, two t, right now if I do this slotted aloha we call it in the slotted aloha if I do this then uh, let's see what, what's the, my period of vulnerability if this guy arrives from here can he interfere with me first of all he doesn't send it right away and and I arrive from here I come I come from here I, I arrive from here and I wait till the end of slot and transfer transmit my packet if this guy arrives here can he try can he interfere with me sure because he waits it zaps, zaps me so this this is bad this period is bad how about if this guy arrives here? Can he interfere with me? No, because he waits till the end and then he sends it and I'm done. So by do, using this very simple trick, he my period of vulnerability goes to one t. On the slotted aloha, I had two t, one t, and he did a very simple calculation. He said my maximum of uh, my maximum transmission rate can go to 36 percent 100 percent beautiful he published a paper everybody recognized him became very popular then he went to patent his idea and they said uh, I'm sorry it is one year about you know uh, if you publish a paper you have one year to patent it after that that becomes public domain you couldn't patent it couple of years later in 1972 uh, Bob Metcalf Bob Metcalf came and <clears throat> used the same idea and he said rather than uh, Aloha let me assume that I have I have a cable okay I have a cable and I 
put my and uh, that was a li literally a cable, a coax cable. Okay, I would put a T here and T here, and then put my stations here. Okay, well, these stations have address A, B, C. So and I put my, all of my stations here. D. So if this guy wants to talk to D, he would get its packet, he would call it friend. We are talking at a physical level. He would say B wants to talk to D and put it on this put it on this uh, cable. So the signal would broadcast both ways. Everybody could hear the signal. A and B are not the destination. D is the destination, so D collects it. Very simple. A wants to talk to B and uh, C, the same thing. Puts a frame together, says A wants to talk to C, sends it through, C gets it. Of course, B can hear it, but doesn't pick it up. The problem was that if A and B talked simultaneously, then what would happen? They would collide. If they collide, they would back up and then do that again. Same protocol, but he patented that. He did some modification. The, the, so the essence was the same. He with some modification, he patented that, and you know what it is? That's your Ethernet. So every single chip in your machine sends a couple of pennies to his pocket. And he retired at age 45. Okay, <laughs> so very rich. Now, now, the, uh, now let's see. So that is the that's the heart of Ethernet. But let's see how it works. Assume that. I have a big cable. So that, that, that so, and by the way, um, uh, the, the way Ethernet works is the following. Uh, so if I, if I hear, uh, if I collide, I would wait randomly and then send again. Randomly means that uh, the first time I take a random number between zero and two, uh, one and two, and then second, if, if I collide again, I take a random number between one and four. If I collide again, one and eight, one and 16, 32, this exponentially goes up, okay? So, which means that if I collide twice, which means that there is a lot of traffic, I better wait longer. So I would randomize. Everybody would randomize here, and eventually it would go through. I think you go up to 16 times, and then if it doesn't go through, you just drop it. So that is at the, at the link level. And link level, you know, is not supposed to be reliable. Okay? Now, uh, so uh, the, the interesting thing is what was that. So that is, the, they, call it, they call it exponential backup. Okay? Now, a couple of problems come up with Ethernet. There is a problem. Assume that this is a this is my cable. Okay, I have one end node, one uh, link as at the at this end of a cable, one link at at this end of a cable. And do you have to leave early, or do you want? Can you wait a little, stay a little bit longer? If you want to take a nap, take a nap. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have to leave it in. Okay. So, if uh, assume that these are my two stations at the two extreme of my my cable. Okay. So, I send I send a. Uh, I sent my 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 frame out. Okay, the frame is not received at node B immediately. It's received some time later. There's a delay, and what is that delay? That is the 
propagation delay. The first bit that I sent, you know, it travels with the speed of light, but it travels non-zero. So that's the end of my packet. Okay? Now, of course, if my packets are too long, and, and, if, and if I send, if at the same time I send my packet from here, and this packet is that long, so at this point of time, they have jammed. Okay? And of course, can this guy realize that they have jammed at this time? They can. Because while I'm sending, I also sense the cable. If there is a, only one volt, assume that when I am sending data, the voltage goes high by one volt. If there is a collision, the voltage goes high much more, much more than one. So at this time, if I sense the cable, and I see a lot of uh, voltage there, I know that there is a, there, there is a jam. Okay? The original protocol, alone protocol, says that to continue sending, at this time, decide to uh, randomize and back off, etc. So essentially, you are wasting, at this time you knew that there was something wrong. But you kept going on. So how would, how would you improve the protocol? It's so obvious. Stop transmitting. You stop transmitting as soon as you, you carry your sense. Carry your sense, collision detection. CSM, okay, CSM. Carry your sense multiple access. If like the A, the blue line is slipping down, is like the propagation of the first mm -hmm. bit, like that wave on the wire. Okay. Then how is it detectable at B before it gets? No, no, no. You are you are sending your 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 you are sending your frame. Your frame goes like this, and this frame goes like this. At this time, they collide. Okay. Everything else at this time on is garbage. But so they realize. Of course, they are uh, they. They realize sometimes later, but they realize it before the end of the frame. So at that time, collision detection. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it wouldn't be like when the first, the beginning of A gets to B. No, the, not the beginning is here. At this time, at this time, B so is like still sending. Like when the blue line gets to. When the blue lines what? So like it detects the collision before the blue line of A gets to the B side. Absolutely, you know, these are garbage. These are garbage anymore because there is there is interference. There is high collision. So, so you you detect you detect the collisions. You carry your sense collision detection, and then immediately you stop. Rather than continuing, you stop, and then to make sure that everybody understands there is a collision, you, you send a very short signal, a jamming signal, high voltage, that everybody listens to that, and then everybody realizes that there is a collision, and you stop. So the protocol is the following. Before, uh, before you go ahead, before you send your data, you sense your, you, you, you sense your career. For example, if If you are here, if B is here, he senses the carrier. The carrier says that there is signal here, A is sending. Then he doesn't send. He waits randomly and then tries again. Okay? So you sense the carrier, carrier sense. It's a multiple axis. And then you, once you start sending, you keep monitoring the signal. Once there is a detection, you jam it, you collision detect you stop immediately. And then you back up and then exponential back up. So they call this, we call this CSMA CD. This is the protocol that runs on your Ethernet. This is the protocol that made Mr. Metcalf very, very, very rich. 
And be, before his, he wrote his dissertation, he patented it. Then he was careful. The first uh, adapter came from, right after his dissertation, he went to Xerox, Xerox Park. Have you heard about Xerox Park? Xerox, you have heard about Xerox, the Xerox uh, copier machine. It was a very, very innovative, uh, one of you had the question, I will come to you. It was a very innovative company. They had a research center, they called it Xerox Park. They did a lot of inventions. First Ethernet adapter came from there. The mouse was invented there. The CRT stuff, uh, just, uh, the WYSIWYG that you see that the editors came from there. They were very innovative, but they were very poor business people. They would make innovation and they wouldn't capitalize on that. Uh, I think they went bankrupt. I mean, they, that, uh, the research center folded, essentially. But uh, the other question. Uh, yes, sir. So, uh, when, uh, before we set uh, into feed uh, the we will send uh, one signal to... No, no. Truck. Before you send A to B, you listen to the cable. Is there, let me sit down because my back is starting to Before you send, before you send, you sense the carrier. If there is anything running, if you see any voltage, you don't run, you back up. If you see it is clean, you start sending. When you start sending, um, you keep monitoring. If within, while you're sending, you see a high voltage again, you know that someone else uh, collided with you, you stop, send a jamming signal, and then back up and retry. Um, my question is, uh, if, uh, is, is it you know that uh, there's no signal in the line, so mm -hmm. it's uh, start sending the package mm -hmm. to me. But uh, at the same time, uh, B also sends the line that, uh, that there's uh, no uh, voltage in the line, so B starts sending the, at the same time. Mm -hmm. Is it possible? Yes. Sure, it is possible. I showed you right here. So at this time, at this point of time, A has started. Assume B comes here. Okay. Assume B comes here and. Uh, ba, 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 ba. I assume B comes here and starts uh, transmitting. So at this point of time, there is nobody, you know, he didn't, because of propagation delay, he, he didn't sense any signal. So he starts the transmission. Yes. And sometimes later they collided. Okay. That happens because of propagation delay. Okay, now, so of course, if the propagation delay was the cause, if this distance was larger, the chance of colliding was, would be more. If, the, if, my, if station A is here, station B is here, so the propagation delay becomes much longer. So the chance of collision is much higher because you cannot hear it. And that's a very good point. Because of that, you want to keep this length as minimum as possible. Yes, that's what how would you keep, keep that length minimum? Uh, for the Ethernet, it's around about 100 meters. Sure. The, the, the thing is that this is, a physical, this is a physical phenomenon. This is a propagation delay. You want to keep the propagation delay minimal. You cannot change the speed of light. What you can change is the length of your cable. So that's the reason they call it local area. It should be a limited length. Okay? So there is, as such, there is, a, there is a standard maximum length of a segment. Okay? That's it. Now, so I limit the length. It's about, I think, 250 or 500 meters, so whatever. There is, there, is a, there is a limit. I do all these provisions. First of all, I don't want to have very long, uh, very long uh, segments, because if I have a very long frames, I sort of monopolize the media, and I don't want to do that. So I put a limit on the length of my length of my payload frame. That's the reason that we have MTU, maximum transmission unit. Okay, MTU comes from here. I want to limit my payload so that I don't monopolize the cable. 
Now, I do all these provisions. Is there any chance that I collide and I don't notice that? While you're thinking, I can have a sip of my coffee. Is there any chance? Joe? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Okay, why? Because you're <laughs> Why? Yeah. Maggie, Jessica. <laughs> So let's see if I have the following. If I have a very if I have a very, very short message. By the way, this is my if I have this if I am sending this packet, what is the length of this time? The length of this time is what? T. Thank you very much. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, what is T? What was that? L. Uh, what is L? R is the capacity. Very good. So, and the, the unit is time, seconds. Okay. So, R is the capacity of my link, which is very fast. At that time, uh, Ethernet was two megabit per second. It was super fast because at that time we were dealing with 356 ki kilobits per second terrestrial link. So local area network, two megabit per second. Wow, it was very fast. Now, now assume that my length is very short. Okay, so as such, this this packet is very short. Takes a very short time. Okay. And I start sending it. Okay. And meanwhile, even though I kept my cable too short, this guy starts sending his packet. And it comes here, comes here. What happens? There's collision. Right? So there is collision. And does this guy understand that there is collision? What he's transmitting is monitoring. Monitors, monitors, there is no high voltage. So at this time, say, oh, I'm home free. My transmission was okay. And this guy say, my transmission was okay. But in fact, there was a collision. So there is something wrong here. Why that happened? No, no. It happened because This time was? Uh, Why did that happen? Because this time was, was too short. Because the length was too short. So I have to keep my length long enough so that this guy understands. So that's the reason on Ethernet, there's a minimum length packet. I think it's 49 bytes or something like this. If your packet is less than 49 bytes, you're fudging some extra bits, dummy bits. Okay, so, so there is a, so you understand why we have MTU, maximum transmission unit, why we have maximum length, and you understand why you have minimum length because of that. Okay, so, so you understood this. Uh, now, so there is, a, there, is a, there is a protocol. Before you access the media, there is a protocol to make sure that you can transmit. Did we have this type of protocol at point to point link? No, because there was point from me to you. If I wanted to send something, you know, I was just send it to you, you would send it to me, and there was a, a um, DLC data link protocol, they would take care of it. They would take care of it, and then there was no collision. It was a point to point. You, I talk, you listen, you talk, I listen, so there was no collision. Okay? And, but in here, in this media, we have this media access control. You have the MAC. It's a MAC protocol. Okay? So, what happened was that they said that this TLC, in fact, a MAC is something 
layer. The neck, the physical layer comes here, and they call it logical link control. Because in DRC, original DRC, it would deal with point-to-point -point link. There was no collision. There was, you know, you send, I talk, you quiet, you talk, I quiet. There was no collision. But in, in, in media access, in shared links, there is a chance of collision. So you do, you, you do need this MAC protocol. This MAC protocol, they put it here. So there's a physical link, MAC protocol makes sure that there is no collision, etc., etc. And then uh, LRC is here. Of course, when I say that there is address, so there is an address here. There's an, the hardware address. There's a hardware address. There's a hardware address. And this hardware address is called what? My it's called MAC address. MAC address is 48 bits. The MAC address goes here. MAC address goes at this, at this level. Okay? The MAC address is different from network address. Network address in TCP IP protocol is what? It's IP address. Okay. In fact, when they invented, uh, when they invented, Ethernet, TCP IP didn't exist. There were other protocol, SNA protocol, DEC pro DECnet protocol, Xeroxnet protocol. Different protocol, they had different addressing scheme. There was no IP address. But they designed it so that the interface here would be the same as interface here. So this guy, the network layer, whether it would be SNA, whether it would be DECnet, they wouldn't know what is running underneath. Okay? Very nicely done. Very, you know, this, this layer would sort of shield the peculiarity of point-to-point -point link as well as MAC link. Okay? And then network layer came on top of that. Of course, when TCP IP came, that becomes IP address. And then this is SNA and they, can, you know, they have uh, vanished. So this is called a, a random access, random access uh, blah, 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 local area network. There was similar, uh, there was an, another technology for local area network. It was called token ring. Have you heard about it? Don't say no. Because, <laughs> why? I spent about eight years of my life perfecting that technology. It came from IBM. It was a competitor to Ethernet. It, it, it perform Ethernet, you know, I told you that Aloha, slotted Aloha performed, the best performance had was 36%. CSMA went to say 90%, okay, with all this thing. We came up with token link, and token link was, performance was 98, 99%, much more efficient. In Ethernet, if you have a lot of stations, then they collide and your network collapses. In token link, that wouldn't happen. The problem with token link was, that the idea of token link is the following. You, you shape your media as a ring, Okay, and then you put your stations here. We connect. Okay, and there is a token that goes around the link. Okay, so if you if you have something to send, you wait for the token, grab the token, and then start pumping to your traffic. The traffic goes here to this destination, goes hard to this hardware address. Is, I'm talking about the physical layer. It would go out, and then it would continue here. The original station, you would clean up your, your mess, your me message from the network, and then let the token go. The token would pass. Next station would grab a token that would, and then send its payload. Very nice. Is there any chance of collision here? No, because there is only one token. Whoever has the token talks. So there was no collision, there was no this degradation of traffic, there was no collision. Much better. But there were 
the main problem of, of token ring was that it was very uh, compared to Ethernet, CSMA. CSMA is very simple, very simple. Token ring was complex. Okay, if for example, if you lose your token, what happens? If there is no token, no one talks. Okay, so you have to recover. Okay, if there is duplicate token, what happens? As such, the adapters became expensive. Originally, Ethernet uh, adapter, this Ethernet card, that now you can buy about eight, ten dollars. At that time, it was about three hundred dollars. Token ring was about five hundred dollars. Okay, there was a difference. It came down. It came down, but uh, economy, token ring died. Even. Even in, IB, in IBM, we used to use token ring, no Ethernet, and everything would be fine, it would work. But then, even within IBM, we started using Ethernet. <laughs> so, so that was the end of it. So that's that's uh, that's the history of my eight years of life. Okay. <laughs> so, um, where was it? It is nine ten. It's nine twenty. If you want to leave, I can. If you can wait for another 10 minutes at least. Can I continue 10 minutes? It's a story. No, it's okay. So, I'm here. So, blah, blah, blah. so, this is, we learned about why we have minimum length. We heard about why you have a maximum length. Now, so, now let's go and. If you have, if you have uh, an Ethernet, okay, and you put signal here, and the stations here, and if the uh, if uh, if uh, if you have a very long, if you have a very long cable, what happens? What happens is that when you put the signal here, the signal degrades. The signal degrades okay. <laughs> at the. By the way, don't forget the. So we have physical layer, physical layer, and we have uh, logical link control. And logical link control essentially it is a. Uh, DLC, original DLC plus Mac. Okay, but essentially this guy. This is layer one, layer layer two. Okay, now so signal degrades, and so you cannot uh, things go bad. If you want to take care of it, what do you do? Uh, can you put the repeater. Or you put the repeater. Very good. You put the repeater. And the repeater, uh, the nice thing about the repeater is that it sort of jacks up the signal and does in, in digital domain, uh, removes the errors and goes here. The repeater is working at what level? Does it work at this level or does it work at this level? <coughs> is there any MAC function here? Is there any medium access c uh, control there? No. The repeater just takes the signal, jacks it up, sends it up. So it's a level one. It's a level one device. Okay, that's a level one device. Now, if you have a very, very long, if you have a very, very long, by the way, so there's a repeater. Repeater is a very simple device, a level one device. Okay. Now, think about my cable. So Ethernet is essentially a cable with nodes attached to it. So that's the reason whenever I want to show you a network, I just draw a cable. I come from old generation. Okay. Now, if I put all this functionality here within a box, okay, and then put ports here, and then connect my computer to these ports.
what is the difference between this Ethernet and this Ethernet with these stations? There's no difference. There's a cable. There are there are uh, you know, there are nodes here attached to it that they talk to each other, and each one of them they have a MAC address. Okay, but the MAC address is 48 bits. These MAC addresses are assigned to you by by IEEE. You go pay them some money, they give you some bits. For example, they say 32 bits is assigned to you, and 16 bits you assign it yourself. So, as such, your manufacturers, they go buy this some bits, I don't know, 32 bits, just as an example. And they assign their cards, these uh, lower level bits. So every MAC address has a unique, universally unique address. Okay, that's the nice thing about it. Okay. Um, where was it? Oh, yeah. Okay, so I, I come, so this device, this operation of this guy and this guy, there's no difference. And this is what we call it a hub. Okay, so this is what we call it a hub. And that's what we go and buy, a, buy it for $8. Okay. Now, if, if I have a very long cable, Then what? And I have an uh, internet here. Then what? If I want to connect them together, then what, what do I do? What do you think I can do? I Your answer is that I'm too tired to think. <laughs> Sorry, let's go home. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> I don't get your question. Was that? No. You didn't get the question. You know, I said that if I have two short cables, I wanted to extend my, my cable, I could put a repeater. Can I put a repeater here also? If I put a repeater, I will violate that length limitation that Sam mentioned. Remember? I know. We ran into trouble because my Ethernet was too long, so I could not, you know, Long propagation delay would cause problem. So here, if I have a problem, what I can do is that I can put a box here that we call it bridge. Okay. So if I want to talk to this guy, I will send A wants to talk to B. Okay. So A gets the message um, blast, the, uh, blast the network. The bridge receives it. Receives it from here and then puts everything on this side. Sends it through. B gets it. And B gets it and then wants to reply. Blasts it through. Comes here. It gets it. Of course everybody here else can hear him. And then this guy blasts it and finally so they can talk through this bridge. So bridge can sort of extend the extent of the network. But bridge has a MAC functionality, it's a level two device. Okay? And the router is a level three device. So there is a bridge here. This is the concept of bridge. Now uh, let's just stop here. So next week we continue from this discussion and then I will relate it to routing and etc. Cetera, et cetera. Question. Yeah. Bridge is a box. Yeah. The original bridge uh -huh. is a physical thing. It has two ports. Okay. No. To connect here? Yeah. Connect here? Yeah. yeah. Was that? So no, no. No, no, no. You know, this is bridge, bridge. Okay. And, uh, it doesn't exist anymore. I, re I remember we were doing some experimentation. I, I bought the, we bought the bridge. It was really that, that size. The last use of it, it was we used it as a doorstop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it was about two thousand dollars. Bridges 